Good morning. Uh, this is Thinkwell, aka Elizabeth. Um, welcome to the channel. We are talking about communication and a mix of other things. So if you've been following along, you know that in my opinion, communication is the main thing that matters for relationships, learning, business. And so today we're going to take a look. This is uh, my thing called Crypto Medium. And you can see I have a whole 11 followers <laughs> and uh, a whole, I don't know, four articles posted here. But I will say that this original article that we're going to look at, this is what got me my, my Web3 writing position. And I'd like to talk about it a little bit today because it is a beautiful crossover between crypto, Web3, and literature. So as you know, um, I have been an English teacher for 14 years and I'm a very avid reader. I'm extremely into psychology and philosophy. And this is the reason why Web3 appeals to me. So a bit of a crossover video today. Um, so if you've ever read Atlas Shrugged by, Al by Ayn Rand, you no doubt recall the fictional hero's haven, the golden Atlantis hideaway nicknamed Galt's Gulch. The fictional Hidden Valley community is home to the great minds of the world while they strike against the looters at, by first dismantling and then abandoning the empires that they have painstakingly built and removing themselves from society. So if you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, let's talk about it. So Atlas Shrugged is a novel and it's written by Ayn Rand or Ayn Rand, some people say, uh, in 1957. So this is a long time ago. This is well before I was born. And I randomly read this novel when I was about 16 years old. And to be honest, I maybe was looking for um, scholarships to university and the Ayn Rand Institute offers some scholarships. So I thought, I love reading. Let's read this book. And it changed my life forever. And You'll hear it come up in my channel if you're following me. Um, I talk about personality types sometimes, and the main character in this novel is the same personality type as me, which is ENTJ. And uh, I think maybe that's why I related to this novel so much, why it captured my imagination. Um, but the highlighted section there is, is saying that the book depicts a dystopian United States in which private businesses suffer under increasingly burdensome laws and regulations, uh, railroad executive Danny Taggart, that's the main character, and her lover, steel magnate uh, Hank Reardon, struggle against the looters who want to exploit their productivity. So a really brief summary. This woman takes over her family business or, you know, inherits it. Uh, her brother is the, the head of the company and she is more like the operations person, but she's really like the heart of the company and she keeps everything going. But what happens is as people move away from wanting to do hard work, they they start to put more and more laws in place that prevent the producers like herself and Hank Reardon, um, who is a steel producer. Um, they start putting in regulations in place that prevent these people from doing the work that they're doing. And the result of that is that things start to fall apart. Uh, if you if you go a little lower here, you can see that John Galt is mentioned. John Galt is. Um, I, that doesn't really help us there, but John Galt is a, a really main character, but he's in the novel, not that much. Uh, but essentially he comes and starts recruiting all of these producers, all of these magnates. So there's like, um, there's a, an oil um, magnate, a steel one. Um, so he starts approaching all of these leaders in production and society and convincing them to go on strike. So they start to leave society and obviously chaos ensues. So uh, in the case of the oil magnate, he has developed a new way to get oil and he lights all of his fields on fire, pieces out. So what does this have to do with Web3? <laughs> Let's go back to the article. Um, obviously, I highly recommend reading this novel. It's, it's a very long novel and it's very philosophical. There's a few speeches in there that last like 30 straight pages uh, without a break. Uh, so if you're looking for something like super plot driven, I mean, it's a great romance as well, to be honest, but uh, it is definitely a heavy, a heavy text. So this is why I'm talking about the ideas for you in this YouTube video. <laughs> okay. Um, so the novel is titled Atlas Shrugged. So Atlas is the god who in mythology holds the world on his back. And so this novel is what if he shrugged and said, screw it, I'm not doing it anymore. 
Un under the often unnecessary urging of John Galt, the character for whom the valley is named, the innovators extract their wealth and they leave their businesses and assets. The, le uh, the leverage that the defectors have and the beauty of their tactic is that, of course, those who remain cannot take over their companies. So the novel's really pointing to the fact that um, people have skills and contributing those skills, they call them the men of the mind because it's difficult work. So if you're doing hard work, you are being an innovator. First of all, if that describes you, then you already know you, use, you usually need to fight against the grain, especially against regulation. Um, so these people have been happy to fight that fight, except the balance has tipped to the point where they can no longer go on doing that. Um, the valley it's talking about is the place where all of these leaders leave. So they leave society and they go and live in the valley called Galt's Gulch, which is made by John Galt. And the reason John Galt's so great is because he's made a motor that requires no fuel. So you can imagine the implications of that in terms of, you know, saving the world. But they try to take it over. And so he also defects and also damages the engine so that no one can replace it. So the irony here is that the, the looters, so-called, which is like the bureaucracy, they want to take over all of these businesses that these people have built, but they find that they don't have the skills to do that. In the absence of the men of the mind, the talented entrepreneurs of the world, there remain those willing uh, only to take orders and those who want power in exchange for nothing. So the looters in the text are the bureaucracy who want to take credit they want to make money, but not by actually contributing anything. They want to live off the backs of the people who are contributing. And uh, there's also the other people who don't want to do any thinking. They only want to be told what to do. So I would argue personality type wise, which we'll talk about Myers-Briggs in some other videos, um, like majority of people in the world are not built to be like leaders and innovators. And that's OK, because obviously, if everyone was a leader and everyone was an innovator, um, the balance of of relationships would be extremely off. So there are people that need to follow instructions, but what happens when the men of the mind leave is there's no one to give the instructions. So there's lots of instances in this novel where there's literally a button that needs to be pressed, but no one will press it unless someone tells them to press it, but no one wants to tell anyone to press it because then they would have to take the responsibility for the outcome of what happens by pressing that button. Uh, and so they would, they would sooner let the consequences of not pressing the button happen than to take responsibility um, and to make the decision themselves. And this is something that to me, I mean, I hope this is, this is maybe ringing some bells for you in society today. So a lot of people don't want to take responsibility. A lot of people don't want to be the decision maker. And again, in a lot of instances, that's okay. But this novel is pointing out some of the, the problems of that. Um, so in my article, I explain that this novel uh, has been problematic for me and not problematic in a bad way, but it's been an idea that I've thought about for years and years, uh, 20 years to be exact. <laughs> so uh, when I came upon the concept of Web3, it reminded me of this and Web3 presented, in my opinion, a possible uh, a solution or essentially a gulch gulch for the people who are innovators. So uh, I'll just skip through here. Basically, Web3 is Galt's Gulch that we've been waiting for, in my opinion. Crypto puts the power back into the hands of those who wish to build and have the capability to do so. A trustless virtual landscape allows those willing to take responsibility to thrive. Because of Web3, I found the place that I'll be spending my time and energy, which is where I've been ever since I wrote this article. Uh, and again, this is the article that I sent as my, my example, um, my sample writing, uh, and, and then started working in Web3 doing writing. Um, so what I mean by that is if you don't know anything about web three, then please like and subscribe to this channel. And I hope that you will find it as exciting and interesting as I do. Um, briefly web three is not a real thing. It's a concept and sort of like a, a word that we use to describe this sort of ideal, which like Galt's Gulch, is a place where people are free and things are transparent and anyone is capable of achieving whatever they choose to achieve. Um, the flip side of that being that they need to take responsibility for it. So um, obviously Web3 uh, applications and that sort of thing have a lot to do with Web2. Um, I won't go into that here, but the idea is quite interesting. 
So in a place where, I mean, I'm coming from teaching, right? And so in Ontario, that's a unionized environment. That means that everyone that works as a teacher, you know, can earn the same pay. It doesn't matter how they perform. It doesn't matter what they contribute. And that is an interesting place to be. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I hope you learned a bit about me and I hope that you are maybe curious about the novel, Um, but do follow for more and I will talk to you soon.